Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Why don't you stand with us tonight? And uh, boy, what a great opportunity to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I have, uh, I've had just tremendous thoughts concerning our revival we had this past week. Y'all, uh, this church was immensely blessed by the ministry of the Holy Ghost and, and the Word, the Word of God, the, the anointing from that precious pastor. That, that was a precious, precious couple services that we had. And I, I believe the church was changed uh, very much for the better. I uh, appreciate your cooperation. We had a great turnout Sunday night. And uh, thank God for that. Thank God for y'all coming back out on Father's Day weekend. Wonderful, just so wonderful. Y'all uh, could have been a lot of places, but thank God that you were here this, for this revival. And thank God that you're out tonight. This is our probably our best Wednesday night crowd that we have had all year. And I am so excited about that. What a blessing this is. We, some are able to make it back. Sister Lisa's first... Wednesday night for a good long time. We appreciate Sister Wilson being here tonight. Then, Brother Dandy, we're so glad to have you worshiping with us again. This is a precious brother, friend of mine, friend of this church, and we, we celebrate what the Lord's doing in his life. So excited, everybody. Uh, you know, these are really, these are real challenging times. And uh, the, the more you, I don't do a lot of watching in the news. I, I read, read, you know, from time to time and try to keep up that way. But the more you, the more you have uh, observation of what's going on, the more you realize our time is running out. The time on this old world seems to be, as we know it, seems to be running out. Amen. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us what to do about that. The Bible says for us to lift up our heads. Amen. To look up for our redemption draws nigh. Amen. The Bible says when you begin to see these things come to pass. And how many know those things are coming to pass all around us? Every day, events are taking place. This world, this world, things are shaping up. And it's not time for you to look down. It's time for you to look up. Amen. Amen. Your, your redemption doesn't come from looking down. You're going to get your help. Because our help comes from above. It comes from the Lord. Amen. Amen. The maker of heaven and earth. It's just it's what, what God is. That's where our help comes from. So we appreciate that. We, we love and appreciate you all so very much. Thank God for you. Thank God for Victor Tabernacle. And uh, we're so excited about what the Lord's doing. You know, I think it's a mindset. You, we, we, we can get excited about it or we can dread what's going on. Really. We can just be bummed out about the freaky things or we can, just, we can have an excitement about it. The, Lord, the Lord's doing His work. The Lord's doing His will. And I'll say this, I add this to kind of what I'm saying. If, if we're right with the Lord and our hearts are right with God, we will have an excitement about what's going on in the world now. We, we're not going to be fearful. Now, there's things that, that could come and trouble us, but we're, 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 we're not fearful because the Lord's not given us a spirit of fear. We have power of the Holy Ghost. And we have love and we have a sound mind. Amen. So the, these are the things the Lord is, uh, I heard it said, and I, I never forget this. I heard it said that the last days don't happen to us. We happen to the last days. Y'all understand that? The church is not freaked out by the last days. The last days are freaking out by the church because there's a Holy Ghost church. It's anointed and it's empowered and it's equipped for this. God's prepared you for these days we're living in. God's given you everything that you need. You have the Holy Ghost, the, the Spirit of God, the Word of God. The, so uh, it, it is really, really, really just a time to be excited and to be thrilled. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of thanks and praise tonight. Amen. God, we love you. Come on, somebody, open your mouth. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God. Oh, hallelujah. Worthy is our great God. Thank you for the touch. Thank you for the touch of God. Thank you for the touch of God in our lives. Thank you for the power of God and the presence of God in our lives. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you for coming out tonight. We really do appreciate that. I just, uh, a couple different directions. I'm, I'm just waiting on the Lord to try to 
to know what I'm supposed to do here. So we all just pray with me just for a minute, please, that we can just know the direction that God would have us to go in tonight. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. My God. My God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right, everybody, I'm going to bring your attention to the book of Matthew, please, in your Bibles this evening. Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to begin reading in, at the uh, 12th verse. We're going to read three verses in this passage of Matthew. This little passage here is Jesus' uh, Sermon on the Mount. It's three chapters of some of the hardest teaching in the whole Bible. Some of the hardest teaching in this whole Bible is in these three chapters. And uh, if, if, you'll, if you'll read these three chapters and you can line up to these three chapters, you're doing pretty good. Trust me, if you read them, you know what I'm talking about. Many of you have. And it's some hard, straight teaching. Yes. Amen. And we're going to look at one of these subjects tonight that is going to be very critically important for some people. And... Uh, we got people at home joining us, and thank God for y'all. Appreciate y'all very much. And we're going to deal tonight with the subject of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Now everybody, everybody don't have an issue with this. Probably most of us here don't. But, but there are some that have issues with this. And this is how important this message is tonight. This message, Brother Adam, to keep me up where I can hear pretty good. This message may be the difference in somebody going to heaven or somebody being lost. The message of unforgiveness. Amen. Matthew 6, verse 12 says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Verse 14, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Amen. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. You know, if we were to just stop right there and just, just, just focus, just zero in on these three little verses here, we, we, we would have enough to establish and understand how critically important forgiveness is. Amen? Just these three three verses alone, but there are many, many other verses in the Bible. We're going to talk maybe about three or four more of these passages, but I wanted to just present to you tonight this subject, and I I felt like these were the best verses to base this uh, subject upon tonight, the, the subject of unforgiveness. Let's pray. Father, thank you, God, for this... Opportunity, God, to stand before your people. Thank you, Lord, for opportunity, God, to preach the word of God tonight for these precious, sweet people that are hungry and thirsty and ready to receive the word of God. Thank you for these that are here tonight to receive. Thank you for these who are at home tonight that are ready to receive the word of God. God, we know that you're working. We know that you're moving. We know, God, that you are ministering, God, to your people. We know, Lord, you're interceding, God, for your people. Even at this, even tonight, Lord, in this service, Jesus is interceding for us to receive things from God tonight. So we just come humbly, God, to you also boldly, Lord, claiming our right and our privileges, God, as children of God. We come to you, Lord, just expecting and believing you to work and move and help us tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Put those Bibles down and give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can be seated tonight in the name of the Lord. God bless you all. 
Unforgiveness is a very unpopular subject. It's, it's, not, um, it's, it's not something that everybody has an issue with, but there are many that do have an issue with it. it it's not something that, uh, that really uh, maybe even too many of us will struggle with, but it is something that some could struggle with. And, and the, the, this whole subject of unforgiveness is so, so important and so critical that if we don't get this right, we're going to be lost. <clears throat> I didn't get as many amens that time. But I'm not just preaching for amens. I'm, I'm going to preach to you the word of God tonight. So this is how important this is. If we don't get this right, we don't make it. Jesus said it right here in Matthew. He says, if you don't forgive those that's trespassed against you, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you your trespasses. And somebody may say, well, I don't have any trespasses. Well, apparently you're not living. Because if you're living, you've, you've got a few trespasses you've made. And if you're living, you've made a mistake or two. You thought something you shouldn't have thought, said something you shouldn't have said, acted in some way you shouldn't have acted. And so we are all guilty. There was only one perfect one, and that was the Lord. Amen. And they crucified him. So we have to deal now with the subject of, the subject of trespasses. And, 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 and because we have all sinned and, and fell short of the glory of God, we have to be forgiven of those sins. And there's only way to get forgiveness of those sins, and that's to go to the Heavenly Father and ask forgiveness of those sins. Amen. We, we, don't get, we don't get forgiveness based upon who we are. We don't get forgiveness based upon our experience in the church or our years of serving God. We get forgiveness as a result of asking for forgiveness. Come on, somebody. Forgiveness is not like the process of osmosis. It's just kind of automatically applied. You are forgiven after you ask for forgiveness. Amen. That's why, that's why it says if we, if, we have, if we have sinned, we should go to the Father who is our advocate and we can ask for forgiveness and he will cleanse us of unrighteousness and our sins. But we have to ask God for forgiveness. And so if we don't ask for forgiveness, then, then there, we're not going to be forgiven. But Jesus even took it a step further here when he said if you... If you, if, if we will ask for forgiveness, look at verse, keep your Bibles open. Forgive us our debts. This is the Lord's prayer. This is what the Lord's saying. This is the, in the Lord's prayer. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In other words, God, you forgive us our sins. Our debts would be wrongs or sins or trespasses. You forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. In other words, I have debts, I have done wrong, I have a price to pay, they're, they're, I've got shortcomings, I acknowledge that, I admit that, and I'm asking you to forgive me for that. But he's saying here, in the same breath, as you ask for forgiveness of your trespasses, you are also forgiving those that have trespassed against you. Now, if you're living here tonight, and you all are, you have had people that have trespassed against you. They may have said something about you, had thoughts about you. They may, they may have bad thoughts about you. They may have taken from you, hurt you, abused you. They, they may have done something wrong for you or to your family or to anybody. If they have trespassed against you, you have to forgive them just in the very sense that you have trespassed against God. And God, will, if, you have, if you ask for forgiveness of God, he'll forgive you. But he said also, in the same breath, you forgive those that's done you wrong. God saying you have done me wrong and I'll forgive you but you have an obligation to those that have done you wrong yes they've done you wrong you have to forgive them just like I forgive you and we don't we don't have a chance to get forgiveness if we don't also forgive others that's done us wrong and, and we have many have pride and many have bitterness and many have things in their hearts against people and they won't, we won't forgive people because of what happened five years ago, 10 years ago, 12, 30 years ago, five days ago. And they, they struggle with, with, with that. And, and the longer that stays in your heart, the harder it is to get rid of it. Bitterness can be a very, very, very tough pill to swallow. And bitterness can destroy you. It can cause you to be lost. 
I don't care how many, I don't know what your name is, it doesn't matter how long you've been in church, it doesn't matter how many little old ladies you walk across the street, it doesn't matter how much money you put in the offering plate, it doesn't matter what your name is, you could be third generation, fourth generation, but if you don't forgive from your heart people that have wronged you and trespassed against you and done you wrong, you cannot be saved. We didn't, we didn't invent this, we didn't draw this up. This is the word of God. He is saying it's, it's, it's important for you to forgive just as important as for me to forgive you. Now I know that's hard y'all and it's tight but it's right. And if we struggle with it it may mean that's something we have to work on. You know why a lot of times amen stop whenever we touch a certain area? Because there's oh me's instead of amens. And the toes are getting stepped on a little bit and the Really, our right attitude, if we really want to, to make it, is, Pastor, whatever you have to do, whatever I've got to do, you tell me what I've got to do. If I have to repent, I'll repent. If I have to work on my spirit, I'll work on my spirit. If I have to make things right with somebody, I'll make things right with somebody. Listen, y'all, there is nothing worth being lost over. There's no mistake you've ever made. There's no mistake anybody's ever made against you. It doesn't matter how bad they were against you, how brutal, how ugly. It doesn't matter the level of the, of the abuse. There is nothing worth going to hell over. It's best we get the record clear now. It's best we get the account settled now and clear the slate and clean it off and let go. Come on, somebody. It's time we let go of some things. Nothing is worth going to hell over. There's no grudge worth going to hell over. There's, no, there's nothing anybody ever did to you worth going to hell over. And it'd be a terrible thing to live for God all of our lives and let some stinking something get in our spirit. Over what somebody did, what somebody said, they didn't look at me right, they didn't shake my hand, they, y'all you know, the, fill in the blanks. And end up being lost over it. There have been people leave churches over trivial things like that. Walk away from God over, the, over some kind of minute little thing. Well, you, you may say, Pastor, that's minute to you, but it's not minute to me. Listen, if somebody doesn't look at you correctly, that's minute. And if somebody don't shake your hand, give me a break. Or if somebody talked behind your back to you and it got back to you, and you were offended by it. You were, you were hurt by it to such a degree to where you're holding something in your heart. You, we, we need to work on that stuff, y'all. We can't go to heaven that way. We can't be saved that way. God help us to let bygones be bygones. And God help us to let the past go and what they said or what they did or what they thought or what they abused, whatever that level, whatever that thing was. It's best we just learn to move on from it. Come on, move on.org, move on.com, move on, whatever it is you're gonna move on from. Just let it go. Let it be in the past. Forgive and let let God work His mercy. Let God work His grace. Let God work it through His Holy Spirit. But we can't be saved with stuff in our hearts. Somebody give the Lord some praise right now. We can't be saved with stuff in our hearts. Well, I don't like it, preacher. Well, you have to, you have to learn to either like it or lump it. This is some hard preaching, but y'all, this Bible's full of hard preaching. And if we're going to be saved, we're going to have to endure some hard preaching. We're living in a time now where people can't endure sound doctrine. And that's the Word of God. This scholar knows it. People, you read your Bible, you know it. If, if you can't endure sound doctrine, something's wrong with your spirit. And if we can't take rebuke every now and then, something's wrong with our spirit. Y'all don't want me to preach. The ministry has the right to rebuke when that's necessary. Reprove and exhort. All three, they go together. 
But we don't like the rebuke part because we get our feelings hurt. We have pride. We think we've got it. We don't need the preacher anymore. We don't need the church anymore. We don't need, I'm telling you, if you're living, you need God. You need the preacher. You need the church. If you're alive, if you're vertical, you need the word of God. You need, you need the spirit. Of, you need the help of the ministry. And we have got to sometimes be reproved. And then even probably less, fewer times we need to be rebuked. But if a rebuke is necessary, if that's the, what stands between us and being right with God, let's, let's allow ourselves to be rebuked. It's not pleasant. Nobody likes that. The preacher hates it worse than the people in the pew hate it. Amen. But there's going to be a lot of preachers with blood in their hands because they refuse to say what God said for them to say. There's going to be a lot of preachers stand before God. And they're, going to, they're going to have to answer for giving, not saying what we should have said and then probably saying what we shouldn't have said. Al is right. <laughs> the baby said, Al, and I hear some others saying Al too. Brother Scott, could you give me a handkerchief, please? I don't know if we have any more here. I just, no more there? All right, so we're talking about unforgiveness. Brother Dale, you ain't used that, have you? I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> Amen. Let's, let's go back to the Bible, y'all. Keep your Bibles open to that little passage here. Brother Bob, keep that verse up for me, please, if you would, sir. Amen. Look at this verse again, everybody. This is in the Lord's Prayer. They, they said, how do we pray, Jesus? And here he is. Just, just part of this prayer, this is part of that. Verse 12, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Verse 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Let's read this together. We're going to go back and we're going to read this verse together. Verse 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Verse 15, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. It don't get any straighter than that. It does not. It just does not. I mean, I like it plain and simple. The older I get, the easier I like it. The, I just I want it straight. Tell, tell me what I got to be told. Lay it out there for me, Pastor. Tell me what I got. And I'm laying it out there for you. The, everybody, this is straight as an arrow, straight as can be. If we'll forgive, we can be forgiven. But if we don't forgive, you, we cannot be forgiven, y'all. Listen, God can't go back on his word. Jesus said, he meant it when he said it. He said, if you want to be forgiven, you have got to learn to forgive for yourself. It's amazing how folks want other people to do things they're not willing to do themselves. You want somebody to forgive you when you won't forgive them. You can't have it both ways. Amen. You just can't. Let's look at a couple more verses, y'all. We're going to show you a little bit more about forgiveness. Brother Bob, if you would, for the screen, and y'all have your Bibles, look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Ephesians 4, verse 32. Amen. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Amen. Before I read that, we're going to look at verse 26. Brother Bob, go back to verse 26 of Ephesians 4. Everybody check this verse out. Now, th this one's kind of hard to, to pill to swallow. Verse 26, we'll get there. Amen. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Paul's not saying you shouldn't be angry. Paul's saying it's, you can be angry. But he's saying don't sin along with your anger. Be angry and sin not. It's okay. To, anger is an emotion that was built into us somewhere, somewhere way back along the way somewhere. But it's there. But that anger needs to be checked by the Holy Ghost. You don't have license to rage out your anger on anybody and everybody. Somebody offends you, somebody runs you off the road in a parkway, you don't have a right from this. Be angry and sin not. All right, y'all. It's really getting cold now. 
and I feel it coming from my brother. <laughs> Not really. Yelling out of anger? No, I've, I've, yeah, well, okay, if, if, if that's what you do, instead of run them off the road, by all means, yell, please. Just don't run them off the road. But we, we're going to have to deal with this anger thing, y'all. Too many Christians have anger issues. Too many Christians are too quick to fly off the handle. I've seen people go into rages. Rages. Raving rages. Christian people. Ugly, mean, wicked, un just wicked, evil rages. And you can't tell me that glorifies God. You cannot tell me that that's a right spirit. Now, I know we make mistakes, and sometimes we, we hit our thumb with a hammer, and, and, and we, we, we have a bad thought, but when I hit my thumb with a hammer, I'm not bragging, y'all, but when I hit my thumb with a hanger, hammer, one of the first things I say is Jesus. I'm sure not saying the other thing. Because you know what? What's on the inside is going to come out. And if a bunch of junk comes out of your mouth when, when something goes wrong, you know what's on the inside. That'll preach right there. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And your actions, your actions will tell on what's in your heart. Amen. And so if you have anger issues, you have heart issues. Hello. If you have, if you have difficulty controlling your anger and your spirit, you need to go back to the altar and have a praying back through. Because we need to be in control of our spirit at all times. Somebody says, well, I, I can't always do that. Maybe you need to pray a little more. Maybe you should need to fast a little more. Humble yourself a little more. Stay in the Word a little more. And the more you have a Jesus, the less there is of you. The more He increases, the, the more you decrease. And the more you can say no to that old rising up spirit, to that flesh man, to the spirit that wants to anger and lash out. And you can get control and conquer that thing. Thing. You can get control over that thing. But you got to have the Holy Ghost to do that. That's why you can't live for God really truly without the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost helps us to become holy. It's not an overnight thing, it's a process. But we're growing in Christ. We're growing in the Word. We're growing in, in, in the admonition of the Lord. It is a process. You don't just get the Holy Ghost and boom, you wake up and you're, you're a holy man of God or woman of God. There's a process involved, but the more time you spend in His presence and in His Word and coming to church and submitting to the ministry and learning the things of God, the more you can grow in the things of God. The next thing you know, you'll be realizing I, I do have a little more power over this, this thing in my life than, than I thought I had. Amen. The more you'll be able to put back that old flesh man and that spirit that wants to rise up in you. Be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. In other words, what he's saying, he says, if you do, if you, if you do, if you do anger, and, and I think even if you sin, you make sure you get it cleaned up under the blood Amen. before you go to bed at night. That's sometimes hard, but it's the best thing to do. Because if you wake up the next day, don't take care of that, or the next day, or the next day, or the next day, what you have is you have what something, you have a seed growing into something a whole lot bigger than just a seed. The Bible talks about a root of bitterness springing up, and that root can become a full blown oak tree. And I know people like that. They're bitter at the world. They're bitter at the church. They're bitter at preachers. They're bitter at brothers and sisters. They're bitter at, at parents. They're bitter at people that have did them. They're just bitter. They're ugly. They're just, they, it, it just it, it emanates from them. It's like you get in their presence and a smoke comes off of them with bitterness. And there's a rage and there's, there's madness and there's ugliness. All because they refuse to not let the sun go down upon their wrath. But if they would nail and just put that thing down and say, God, I have done wrong and they've done me wrong, but I'm going to bury the hatchet and I'm going to forgive them and I'm going to ask you to forgive me and I'm repenting of my sin and I'm forgetting, forgiving them and I, I ask you to forgive me as I forgive them. Hello, y'all. Come on, somebody. 
Now again, everybody don't struggle with this, but I'm, I'm reaching for somebody that may or you may have an issue with it next week or next month sometime. We have got to nail this thing down because if we don't, it could cost us to be lost. When somebody says, what about, what about my living for God? What about repent? What about my salvation experience? Yes, yes, that's all true. But, but there's things that come in, that come in con connection with that, and that, work, that work in connection with that. We have to maintain this relationship with God. We have to maintain this place. You don't just get the Holy Ghost, and next thing you know, it, it's all free, pass, like, just like the game of Monopoly. Go, you collect, go pass, go, collect $200, and there you go. It just doesn't work like that. Amen. So look at this verse again here. Be angry. He said, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. He's saying just get it right. Just make it right. Just make it right. Then this, you say it's too hard. It's not too hard. If it was too hard, he wouldn't ask you to do it. Come on, y'all. If it was too hard, he wouldn't have said for us to do it. But I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And I can do this. Somebody shout, I can do this. I can repent if I have to repent. I can make things right. I can get on my knees if I have to. I can make the phone call if I have to. I can go visit my brother if I have to. I can do this thing. Neither give place to the devil, verse 27. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm in this knee deep now. And I might as well finish it while I'm here, Brother Dale. I don't, I don't need to just start this thing and not finish it. Verse 27, neither give place to the devil. If we don't make things right, we're giving place to the devil. That's what's happening. The same context. If we anger, and we, it's okay, don't sin. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. And he says, neither give place to the devil. It's all in the same, same, same context. If we don't do the above verse right, we're giving place to the devil. And if you give him an inch, he'll take a stinking mile. If you let him get in his toe in the door, he's going to put his foot in the door. Yeah. Next thing you know, he's going to be all the way in the door. That's like Ahab wanted to buy, uh, wanted to buy Naboth's vineyard. It was, it, Naboth's vineyard was in his inheritance. That was his. It was given to him. It was his right, rightful ownership. He had, he had proper ownership of that. And, Na, and Ahab, the wicked king, wanted to buy it. And he went and tried to steal it from him and, and get it or trick him out of it. And, and Naboth said, no, I'm not selling you my vineyard. This is, this, this is my property. This, this is mine. This is my inheritance. Then he went. He got upset. He, Jezebel went and had him killed off. And then they got the vineyard anyway, but Naboth said, no, not today, not tomorrow, not, not next week. I am not for sale. What's mine is not for sale. I wish somebody would say, my walk with God is not for sale. My inheritance is not for sale. Come on, y'all. What I've got from God, I have I paid the price for. God's given to me, and it is not for sale. There's always an Ahab out there that wants to take from us. And then there's always a Jezebel that wants to go the next level and even try to do us harm and danger. But Naboth stood his ground, and you can too. So don't give place to the devil. Somebody shout, don't give place to the devil. Don't give place. Don't give place. If you learn that lesson, you probably learned it very hard. Don't give place to the devil. Somebody says it's just, I, I, I've got so much to preach on me tonight, I just tell you. Somebody says it's just a small drink. Every alcoholic starts with a small drink. Somebody said it was just a little innocent thing between him, me and her. Every, every bad relationship starts with just a little innocent thing. Come on, y'all. Well, it's just one, just one little try it at drugs. Every, every addict started with one little try, one little experiment. So if you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. That's why Paul said, look, nail it down. Don't give him any room. Don't go there. Don't, don't give place. All right, y'all look back now. In the same context of Paul's teaching, we're going to look at this 32nd verse of this fourth chapter of Ephesians 4, 32. Look at this verse, y'all. And be kind... One to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, 
even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Look, look at the context of, the, of this forgiveness thing. It's, it's in the same wording of being kind and tenderhearted. You can't be kind and tenderhearted and not be forgiving. Go look at it. Can't do it. If you're kind and tenderhearted, you will be a forgiving person. Amen. And I'm, I'm back to, back to the, the people that go into those rages and are ugly and lash out and give them a piece of their mind. You better keep all the mind you got. You're going to be needing it sometime. You may need every little cell you got. I'll give them a piece of my mind. You don't do that. Vengeance is mine. The Lord said, I will repay, saith the Lord. Well, I hope I'm going to pay them back. I don't, listen, you've heard it said, and I'll say it. I don't, I don't agree with it. I'll forgive, but I won't forget. That's stupid. That's not true forgiveness. That's, that, that's stupid. I'll, I'll forgive them, but I'm going to get them back one day. That's not forgiveness. I'll forgive them, but I'll go back and I'll tell 30 of their friends what they did. And I'll get on Facebook and I'll, I'll clear my name, but I'll lambast theirs. God have mercy. That's, that's as Brother Merrill Cornwell says, that is turbo super stupid. Some of y'all laughing, but there's, there's people who do that kind of stuff. And we can't do like that. Listen, I'm, I'm not talking to just, I'm not just talking y'all to, to, to average Everyday, we're the church of the living God. We're held to higher standards. Come on, everybody. We're held to higher standards. You expect that stuff from the world, but not from the church. Be kind, one to another, tender hearted. I like these words. I, I, I'm trying to live my life this way. It, 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 it really takes the Holy Ghost. It does. To be tender hearted. My, my grandmothers and grandparents, my, I don't know so much about my grandfather, Papa. I don't know that he was too tender hearted. He was in some ways, but my, little, my precious nannies were very tender hearted. And uh, they, were, they were always kind. And, and again, here y'all, here's what, here's what Paul said forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, forgiven you. I mean, look at one more verse. And I got two more passages. This one and one more that we'll try to wrap this up. Colossians 3.13. Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Colossians 3, verse 13. Look at this. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. I didn't say I was done, Scott. Just <laughs> hang with me. Come on up. That's good. I forgive you, brother. Look at this, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. You think about, you think about how the people hurt the Lord. You think about how they hurt our Lord. And those, those nails and that spear and the bruised his back and they opened up his back and all, all of that pulled his beard out, spat in his face tried to kill him many times even before they, they did crucify him and you look at that and then the forgiveness of Jesus Christ forgiving him even on the cross while they were killing him, he's, he's forgiven them forgive them for they know not what they do and that same spirit of forgiveness is only, only can be done through the power of Christ that, that, that paved the way here for us with this. And he's saying, even as Christ forgave you, also do, that's what you do also. As he was hanging on the cross, he forgave them. Now we, it, it, that, that same sin was passed down along 
all the way through humanity, the blood, the bloodline has been tainted ever since Adam and Eve. We have been sinning against God the whole time. And as God has forgiven us, so should we forgive other people. Somebody say it's hard. Somebody say, I don't know that I can do that. But if, if he's hanging on the cross with nails in his hand and spikes in his feet and a spear in his side, if he can forgive those people, come on somebody, you can forgive other people. They've not done that to you. They've not done you like that. Somebody said, you don't know what they did to me. It doesn't matter. Nothing can compare to that right there. And he forgave us and forgive them. And then by all means, we can forgive others their trespasses against us. Forbearing one another. That means bearing, going the extra mile, working with them, making allowances for them, working with them. Let's, let's work this out. Let's reason together. Let's forbear one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Amen. And then I'm going to close with one passage, and this, this, this will be the coup de grace. This, this passage is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 18. It's a long passage. We're going to read it. We're going to read it together if you have your Bibles. Matthew 18, verse 23. Many people do not understand the application of this, this parable. Many people don't. Most don't. And I didn't understand it until it was clarified and brought to my attention years ago. But I see it as an incredible, incredible uh, beacon, a, a, a lighthouse, a, 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 a massive shining light down upon the subject of unforgiveness. It's this parable right here, Matthew 18. And let's look at this. And if you have your Bibles, read along with me. You don't get to read out loud, but let's read this together. Therefore, is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain man, king which would take account of his servants. When he began to reckon or began to observe them or watch them or give them account, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and his children and all that he had in payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him his debt. Look at that. Forgave him his debt. And by the way, that debt was an astronomical. I, I did some research, a little bit of reading on this, and that debt was completely, completely beyond any means possible that that man could have paid. If he was a, if he was a labor worker, that worked the rest of his life, there was no chance possibly he could have paid that whole debt back. But look, then the Lord, well, the servant was moved with compassion. Amen. And uh, loosed him and forgave him his debt. But the same servant went out. Look, at now the guy's forgiven. He's free. Now he goes up about taking care of his business. Look what he did. Same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. Now this percentage, this, this hundred pence is minuscule compared to the enormous debt that this guy owed his 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 Lord. Nothing comparison. Absolutely nothing. He owed him a hundred pence. He laid hands on him. Look, at this is what the guy that was forgiven did. He laid hands on the guy that owed him, took him by the throat, saying, pay me that thou owest. His fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. And he would not, he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desiredest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him unto the tormentors till he should pay all that was due to him, which most likely was never, ever, ever fulfilled. Because there was no way he could have spent enough time in jail to pay this amount of money that he owed this man. 
And look at, look at the Lord's words, red letters in your Bible. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Real, real quiet now. And it probably should be. Now here's overview. The guy owed a lot. He was forgiven. He went out and found somebody that owed him a little. He said, no, I'm not forgiving you. I put his hands around his throat. It was mean, ugly, put him in prison. He said, you're going to stay there till you rot until you pay me every penny you've got. And then the big Lord said, oh, that's, so that's how we're going to play here. That's how we're going to do. Then he had his men, his lynch men, go get that guy and put him in jail. He said, you're going to stay here until you pay me everything you owe me. In other words, his, the sins that were forgiven and washed away were, were put back on him as a result of his unforgiveness. Are y'all hearing me? Y'all understand that? All that was forgiven him, the, the bad guy, the one that was the, the one that, that did the throat thing. All, all this stuff was forgiven him. All those years was forgiven him. And he's a free man. And he goes out and lashes out at somebody. And then the big Lord says, all those deaths, all those years of forgiveness, I'm putting right back on you. And you now have all that heavy load back on you. And you have to stay until you pay every single last one. And so here's the moral of all that story, y'all. If we don't forgive others, there's trespasses against us. Our Heavenly Father is duty bound to, to not forgive us of ours. We better be learning how to forgive all over again. If anybody has said anything, done anything, even thought anything, if you know about it, you owe to forgive them you better to forgive them it's it's life and death everybody either we forgive or we're going to be lost now is that too hard for us tonight y'all well it's hard but it's the word of God and if you have something in your heart against somebody I would highly highly think about working on that Like post haste. That means fast. Jesus said, "If if you if you come to the altar, you bring a, bring a gift." He said, "You remember you got something. Somebody's got something against you. Leave it there. Go straighten things out, and then come back." I I don't want to I don't want to waste my time serving God, and and, and have things in my heart. That's hindering me from being where I need to be with the Lord. And if, if unforgiveness is in my heart, y'all, I'm, I'm in bad trouble. No matter, how much I, no matter how much I repent and try to make things right, if I've got stuff in my heart that's not right, I've got a blockage. I've got, I got a hold up somewhere, somehow, and I've got to try to get that corrected. So the, everybody, everybody, the, y'all, y'all don't, oh, don't, everybody don't have to have application of this right now, tonight. But you may have to have this applied sometime. And this is the Word of God. This is teaching from the, the Bible, the Word of God. And somebody says, well, I don't have anything. Well, thank God for that. You just keep your heart right. Keep your heart clean. And if, if, if the occasion arises where you have to forgive somebody, you, after tonight, tonight's lesson, you have learned real quickly from the pastor in 45, 50 minutes of teaching. I know now I've got to forgive them no matter how bad it was, no matter how ugly it was, no matter they, they said what they did, what they thought, how, how they acted against my family. I was hurt. Come on. Thank you, Brother Scott. I was done wrong. Yes, we have been done wrong. We, but we've also done done wrong we we we're the ones our forefathers are the ones that put christ on the cross our sins put jesus on that old rugged cross so some there's nobody innocent there's nobody perfect everybody needs to repent everybody needs to also forgive those that's done them wrong hallelujah And you know the biggest problem to getting all this stuff straightened out is our stinking pride. Our stinking pride. Pride goes before destruction, haughty spirit before a fall. Well, I'm, I've got position, I've got status, I've got money, I've got this, I've got that. You ain't got nothing God didn't let you have. I mean nothing. Am I saying that plain enough? 
You couldn't catch your breath on a fast train if God wouldn't help you. You'd be not even able to put a spoon in your mouth and feed yourself if it wasn't for grace and mercy. So I, I believe that the Lord is helping us tonight, y'all. And, and, and the, tonight's message can be a life-saving message for somebody. And I, I wish 10,000 people would hear me. I'm not afraid to say that. I wish 10,000 people would have heard this tonight. I wish a million people would have heard it because there's probably a million out there that needs this message. If not more. Many people in our churches are locked up. They're bound. They can't shout. They can't. No wonder they don't shout. The shouter is locked up. No wonder they're not free to lift their hands and rejoice and worship and, and magnify God and take part in the service and run the aisles and really be... It's because there's a blockage somewhere. There, there's a hindrance somewhere. That hindrance may be they've got stuff in their heart that's not right. So somebody stand up on your feet right now and I want you to say, Lord, help us, God. Come on, somebody. Lord, help us, God, to have clean hands and a pure heart. Lord, wash us of anything that of what we've done wrong. Lord, help us to be forgiven people. Help us to go the extra mile, Lord. If I got to call somebody, let's call them, Lord. Help us to call them, Lord. If I got to repent, oh God, help me to repent. In Jesus' name, if I got to forgive, Lord, help me to do the forgiving thing all over again. Oh, Jesus, help us, God. Lord, I've tried, God, to do this. I've tried to do this, Lord, as... As I should, God. Lord, and I thank you for talking, Lord, and helping us, God. Lord, I'm not ugly. I'm not mad at anybody. God, it's just, it's, it's, it's critical. It's, it's life or death, God. It's salvation. These are salvation matters, Lord, for us. If we don't do this right, God, and get it right, Lord, we won't be saved. We're asking you to help us, God, to do it right and get it right, Lord. If we need to make something right with somebody, God, by all means, give us the courage and the boldness to go make corrections and reparations, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, I pray for the courage and the boldness that we need, God. In Jesus' name, Lord, to repent, God, and forgive. Amen. Repent and forgive in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, that we have received this tonight. Thank you for everybody. God, everybody has so humbly received this tonight here. I appreciate that, Lord. God, we are, we are ready, Lord, for you to take us on to the next place you have for us. We're ready, God, for revival. We're ready, God, to move on in you and in you, Lord. And just help us to do this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Help us, God, to have clean hands and a pure heart. Help us, God, to just have our hearts right and prepared and our lives meet and ready for the Master's use, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, God. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Why don't somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight? Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, it's, a good, it's the word of the Lord, y'all. And uh, I feel like I've delivered my soul tonight. And the, Lord, the Lord's helped me. You have been so sweet and precious to receive the word tonight. Thank you all, everybody. We love you. We love you at home. I, if my friends from work are watching, God bless you guys. I appreciate y'all. All my brothers and sisters here, we love and appreciate y'all. Best crowd on Wednesday night we've had in so long a time. I am so excited about it. I'm so. Maybe we should have Brother Hodo back a little more often. Because he, he, he has blessed this church. We have, we have ramped it up. We have, we have ramped it up so, uh, to another level in God. We appreciate y'all. Y'all, we're going to let Brother Mike bring the offering plate up here and... Uh, do whatever he can do to uh, get these up here for you to give. Y'all do what you can in your giving tonight. The Lord bless you for that. 
If you're at home tonight and you're paying your tithe and your offerings here to the church, remember your, your commitments to the work of the Lord in the church. Thank you for supporting and partnering with us here at Victor Tabernacle. Thank you all, precious saints. God, remember Sunday 10, Sunday school worship at 11, and uh, we're going to have a great time in the Lord. Prayer tomorrow night, 6.30. We're going to have prayer tomorrow night. We moved it up from last night to Thursday, so if you can come out, we'd, we'd love to have you. If you can't, we understand. We'll meet back Sunday here for church. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord. God bless you, everybody. Appreciate you. Love you so very much.